Okay, so we're looking at this question. It's a matrix question, and we are asked to determine the values of C and D. And we can look and examine where C and D is, obviously. We have the entries in the first matrix, which is a 2 by 1 matrix, which means 2 rows, 2 columns. Okay, and so that's 2 by 2. And what we have here is a, a 2 by 1 matrix. Over here, we have a 2 by 1 matrix as well. So this one is pretty similar to this one. Now the thing is, when we multi what we're seeing here is that on the left-hand side of the matrix equation, because it's an equation basically, as we can see the equal sign here, we have two matrices being multiplied to produce a third matrix, which is 7 over 1. If you multiply these two, matrix, these two matrices, we'll get 7 over 1, sorry, 7 and 1 as the entries for the, the resultant matrix. So what is the value of C and D, such that when I multiply these two matrices, I'll end up getting 7 and 1 as entries for the result. So we need to find what these two values are for C and D respectively. Okay? So when I'm finished, with the, when I'm finished working this, working out C and D um, of the matrices, what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug the values of C and D um, into the matrices and then multiply them and I should get 7, 1 as entries for the resultant matrix. If that's not clear? Well, as we do it, you will pick up so let's go through that quickly. Okay, so we're going to multiply these two matrices. Now remember that an, a, a row by a column will produce only one entry. And so we're going to multiply the 3 by the, the 3 here. So let's remember what we're going to do. We're multiplying what? We're multiplying a row of the first matrix by the column of the second matrix. Okay, and that will produce one single entry in the resultant matrix. So let's go about doing that. And remember, we multiply corresponding entries. So 3 times 3, that's the first entry. 3 times 3. And then 3 times 3, so first by first. Then we look at the second ones, the second entries. 6, sorry, C by D. So we we'll multiply C times D, which give us CD. Now remember, I have to put the plus sign in between the products. So it's 3 times 3 plus C times D. First by first, second by second. I remember, it's the row of the first matrix multiplied by the column of the first, sorry, of the second matrix. Row of the first by column of the second. That's not confusing. And the next one, let's go with the next one now. So I'm going to take now. I'm going to take the the second row this time. The second row this time. I multiply it by the well, the only column I have there. So let's go with that one. So what we're going to do is going to be one times three, which is the first by the first. So we multiply one times three plus the second by the second, so it's 2 times D, which can give us 2D. Now remember, we multiply the matrix by a matrix, and so what we have here is a matrix. And then we're going to put back the equal sign, and 7, over, and 7, 1. Okay, now we need to wrap this up. So let's simplify this a little bit. So what we have is 3 times 3 gives us 9. Plus, uh, CD cannot be simplified any further. Uh, 1 times 3 is 3. Plus 2 times D, which is 2D. Which is equal to 7, 1. Now, if you look at this, we recognize that we cannot add 9 to CD because these are unlike terms. Neither can we add 3 to 2D because these are unlike terms. And so we have to just go further by looking at the, the, these two matrices. This is what type of matrix. Looking at it, we recognize this as one, two rows, but one column. This is the term. It's just that we cannot simplify any further. So this is one term, another term. So it's a two row by one column. So it's a two by one matrix. And this has two rows as well by one column. And what we're taught is that when we have two matrices being equal, 
it means that the corresponding entries are also equal. When we have two matrices, that means the order, same order, it means that the corresponding entries are equal. So what we're saying here is that this entry here of the first matrix is equal to this entry here of the second matrix. Why? Because both matrices are equal. Corresponding entries are equal. And if corresponding entries are equal, what we're saying here is that the first entry in the first matrix will equal the first entry in the second matrix. All right? And if that's the case, uh, if you look at this, can we solve for C and D? No, we can't. All we get is that CD is equal to some value there. Uh, we probably can simplify this a little further. But let's, uh, can we simplify that further? Yes, let's simplify that. We probably can make CD the subject. And what will we have there? We'll have CD being equal to what? 7 minus 9. We just transfer the 9 to the next side and sign change. And we'll have CD being equal to negative 2. But guess what the problem is? We can neither find D nor C because in that case of CD, we have two unknowns there in C and D. We should have only one unknown if we have to solve. But let's examine the second, the second entries in the corresponding matrices. So we have this entry and this entry here. Uh, they are equal made the point earlier and why they're equal. So let's look at that one. So we have the second matrix, second entry, sorry, which is equal to this entry here. So what we have there is 3 plus 2D being equal to 1. Okay, and so this is my second equation. So let me just label this as my first equation and this one as my second equation to avoid confusion. So I want to, looking at this one, I only have one unknown. So it means that I can actually solve for D. All right, so if I can solve for D, what I'm going to do is to transfer the three over, okay? We usually look at the term that's affecting everything else. So if you look at the three, it's adding to two D. And I didn't get rid of the D, for the two first, because the two is only multiplying D. But the three is adding to two D, so I'm going to get rid of the three first. So what I'm going to have there is one, which is already there in this position, but the three transferred to the next side becomes negative and so I have 2d being equal to negative 2 now to solve for d if you're looking at it the 2 is multiplying everything else over here which is just d anyway but to get rid of it since it's multiplying we divide on both sides as a matter of fact to keep the equation balanced so what I have here is d being equal to negative 1 so if you look at it think about what's happening here we have d we have solved for one of the unknowns Remember, there was, what we were asked to do is to solve for C and D. We have found D, and D is, as mentioned before, is negative 1. Now, let's look, look, back, up into, look up, back up to this equation here. We have C, D being equal to negative 1. We could either use this one or this one. But it's a simplified version of equation 1. So we're just going to take this one. It says C, D is equal to negative 1. Now, think about what that means. If we have that CD is equal to negative 1, let me just make sure I have the right things. CD is equal to negative 2. My, my bad. CD is equal to negative 2. And we are, we're given, uh, we will just work out that D is equal to negative 1. It means we can find D. Think about it. What are we saying there? We are saying we can actually replace the D here with its value here. Okay, so in this case, we have C times D. So it's actually C multiplied by the value of D, which is negative 1, which is equal to negative 2. This is D multiplied by C to produce negative 2. What is C? Negative 1 times C is actually um, negative 1C. But if you think about it, we can think about it in another way, is that C is multiplying, negative 1 is multiplying C. So when we transfer the negative 1 from this side, of the equation when it goes over instead of multiplying what it does it divides you might be wondering how it didn't turn to positive one no it's this negative one is actually multiplying see we also we look at what it's doing to the term on this side and in this case it's ne multiplying negative one is multiplying C 
So to get rid of it, we divide by it on both sides. Okay, and so we're gonna have there um, C being equal to positive two. So we found both values, D being equal to negative one and C being equal to two. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just go back through the solution as mentioned early in the beginning that we can actually double check by multiplying these two matrices to see if we get 7 and 1. So let's double check to make sure my values were really correct. Because I might have made a mistake maybe with the signs, which is possible, all right, because of lack of keenness. So let's double check that. So we have 3, C, 1, and 2. I'm going to just rewrite that. Okay, so we have 3, C, um, I forget what those values are. 3C, 1 and 2. And I'm going to multiply by, I think a D should be here. And what values do we add up there? Okay. We have 3 on top. Alright, then we had a 3 here. And what we were supposed to get, we were supposed to get 7 and 1. Okay. So let's look at that. 7 and 1. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to replace C and replace D with the values we actually found. So we have 3, 1, and C was found to be 2. And uh, D was found to be negative 1. Let's double check that to ensure. Okay, so we have D there being negative 1 and C being positive 2. So just replacing the C with positive 2. Next, I'm going to replace the D with negative 1. Remember, we multiply these two, we should get 7 over 1. And if the values of C and D are correct, being 2, and negative 1 respectively, I should get 7 over 1 when I multiply these two. So let's go about doing that. So I'm going to multiply the, I'm going to multiply the row of the first by the column of the second. Okay, so let's look at it. First by first, so if we have 3, multiply by 3, plus 2 times negative 1. Okay. Then we're going to go on to the next one. Since I have exhausted the, the column, we have no more column to multiply row by, so we go down to the next row. So our answer should be in the, the second row, because we deal with the second row. Okay, so we're going to have 1 times 3, plus 2 times negative 1. Again, we have 2 times negative 1. The reason we have 2 times negative 1 again is because we have another 2 here. Okay, so. Uh, let's just continue down and simplify further. 3 times 3 is 9 plus uh, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. We'll put a bracket there to separate uh, the signs, operation of plus and the negative sign, sign of quality. 1 times 3 is 3 plus and again we have 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And simplifying further, this is going to be 9 plus negative 2, which is 9. We have different signs. This is a negative and this is a positive. And different sign, we find the difference. The difference between 2 and 9 is 7. And again, if you look at this one here as well, we have 3 and, and 2. They both have different signs, 3 and negative 2. And so we find the difference, which is 1. Keep the sign that follows a larger number. It's positive. So we have 7 over 1. So yes, we did in fact get the, val the right values. I hope that was really clear. And uh, have a wonderful night.